Mandakini stared at her for a moment as Kundeva came near her. Then Iliaprati did something that no one expected. She fell on the ground and prostrated herself by touching Mandakini's feet. Tears welled up in Mandakini's eyes. She bent down and picked up the crouch and hugged him. Then Ilayaprati took one of her arms up to her shoulder and clasped her with hers and came towards the place where the emperor was lying. Charkavarthi had just gotten a good look at Mandakini's face. He saw blood pouring from her forehead. Swami! Did you hurt yourself by throwing the lamp? Alas! What have you done? screamed Malayaman's daughter. No, no! The lamp that I threw never fell on her. Before that she came with a bloody wound. But even if this wretch blames me, she will. You will believe it. You are all on her side. Malayaman's daughter. Do you even pity her? Who is she? Do you know? Asked Sundara Chola. I know, Swami. This is my family deity, the deity of the Chola clan. Isn't it the deity who saved my lovely son from drowning in the Kaveri? Aha! Do you believe so too? Did Kundave tell you so? I'm telling you what I saw with my own eyes, wasn't Kunta a child at the time? What could she have known? Not only did she save Aromazai, but this is the goddess who saved the Chola nation with their lives. Wasn't she the goddess who saved them from being prey to a wild bear on the island of the giants? My god! Do you even know that? Do you even know she's been alive this long? I have known for some time. Ever since I came to know, I have been telling the Prime Minister to bring this goddess from Elam. Anirida! What is this Maharani saying? Is she really the weaver's daughter? Is she alive? Is it a lie that she is dead? Is it all a delusion that I thought her spirit was coming around me? My mind is already confused. Don't you all make me completely mad!" said Emperor Sundara Chola. Lord! It is true that this is Karayar's daughter. It is also true that she is not dead. Emperor! I am a great criminal. There is no forgiveness for my crime but by their mercy. Prime Minister! Now it seems, she is the one you forcibly brought from Kadakare. It is not true that you said that the runner girl was the one who came in the Palak. King Mana! I must forgive my servant. Aha! I must forgive you. It has never happened since the beginning of the world that a person who was supposed to be an emperor and a king has been deceived like me. Why should you do this without my knowledge? Why should you not have told me before? You were talking to me all this evening? Why did you not tell me then? Prime Minister! Everything is clear. The detractors are right and you are all conspiring against me. Seeing him jump over the wall of Palyavur Palace Garden, my disciple also jumped over the wall. But this goddess was not caught. Tirumalai was captured by the men of Pavur. Emperor! I pray to forgive my disciple for the crime. Is this a crime to forgive? There is so much. Then tell me. Then, after waiting until this evening and searching inside the Palyavur Palace, he was not found. We were all talking about him in the next room when we were in tears a little while ago. We were thinking about where he could be hiding, how to tell them about all this and who to tell them. He has come to their presence. It is as if the fruit slipped and fell into the milk. Emperor then looked at the place where Goddess Mandakini was. He observed Kundave. Pungazali etc. wiping the wound on the forehead of the lady with a wet cloth and applying medicated sandal paste on it. Vidangar daughter! Will you ask me how your aunt's forehead got injured? said. Pungazali came two steps ahead and said, I have heard, sir. But I do not understand the reason auntie is telling me. What's she saying? She's saying the injury was caused by me throwing the lamp. No, no. He says he got hurt by knocking over the hill. He says he didn't notice the bleeding. Sundara Chola then did a very unusual thing. He laughed uproariously. It had been many years since others had seen him smile like that. Again and again he thought and laughed. 
Everyone started staring at him worriedly. Prime Minister, why are you all staring at me like this? I am not mad again. Only the old madman is left. Now you all do not know why I am laughing? In Chola Valinat, she is saying that she hit a mountain and got hurt? I laughed thinking about it. Shall I tell you about the mountain? A stone to make a small idol here. Don't you get it? If someone wanted to put a stone on the head of the Chola Emperor, not even a black stone would be found. Are you saying that she hit a mountain? What mountain did she hit? Punguzali, listen well. Said. Hearing all this, Venati's face lit up. She suddenly came two paces forward and saluted the Emperor. Sir. If I see something, I will tell you. She said. Velir's daughter. Are you here somewhere else? I have not noticed you all this time. You do not faint and fall even after all this stumbling? That is the wonder. What do you think? About what? Tell me. Declared the emperor. You say that this goddess was injured by hitting the mountain. I see something about that, sir. What? What? You're a smart girl. You'd understand any reason. Tell me quickly. Have you come here with that bloody wound after knocking on a mountain in the country of Elam? No, sir, isn't there a sculpture hall in this palace garden? Within it is the Kailasa mountain that Ravana holds up. Perhaps he is knocking on it. When Venati said this, all the people were drowned in the sea of amazement. Maybe, maybe. So be it, they said to each other. Kundave touched Venati's forehead and straightened his hand as if he were passing away, Adi my dear. How clever you are. You have seen what the rest of us have not seen. She said. Pungujali left looking at it angrily and spoke to her mute aunt in Samigna and then said, Yes. That is the mountain in the sculpture hall. If I had seen that hall, I would have known it. She said. Emperor Mandakini stared at Mandakini and said, Yes, she is knocking on the hill of the sculpture hall, not knowing the way. She has finally arrived here. Said. He is looking for a way to come to them. There is no doubt about it. I myself was telling them that he will not leave this place without visiting them. I don't believe it, Prime Minister. If she was coming to me, wouldn't she have come earlier? Wouldn't she have been here for twenty-five years? Wait all these days? Come and roam around me as a ghost? Yes, yes. I thought she was in the form of a ghost. Is that true? Like a ghost wandering in the forest hills of Eela. She has come. I have spent all this time immersed in palace comforts. What is the power of crime? How many times has my soul been confused by the sight of such a figure, who has seen it? Did it come secretly before, as it did now, and leave me, or what? I was threatened by thinking that I was the devil. Twenty-five years. Twenty-five ages. The emperor, who had been talking to himself like this, suddenly turned to Anuradha and said, Prime Minister, did you apologize by saying that you had committed some crime? What crime was it? He asked angrily. Anuradha said, Emperor, is it Dharma to ask the criminal himself about the crime? Said. Then, who do you ask? Yes, you don't have to ask anyone. It is written on your face. You came and said that she fell into the sea and died? That is a lie. You have been carrying out that lie for twenty-five years. I have believed it too, Anirida. Truly your crime is terrible. I am not the only one responsible for that, Emperor. The daughter of the Karayar clan is also responsible. It is true that he fell into the sea. Then he was reborn. He made a promise not to tell them that he was alive. He said that if he did not give the promise, he would leave his life again. Ask him and find out for yourself if all this is true. You can. There's no need to ask. So be it. But there's nothing wrong with me saying you're all conspiring against me, isn't there? Said Sundara Kalar. 
there is no forgiveness for the crime I have committed, I do not ask for forgiveness. But the burden that has been on my mind for many years has been lifted today. Now give me farewell. Go to Thiruvarangam and allow me to spend my days in the service of Sri Ranganatha. That is impossible, Brahmaraya. So many confusions have arisen today because of the crime you committed that day. Shouldn't you settle them all and go to serve Ranganatha? said the emperor.